Welcome everybody to Go Local Live. I'm Josh Fenton, CEO and co-founder. Couple quick things before we go to John Marion, uh, the head of Rhode Island Common Cause. I want to thank Dr. Michael Fine for joining us today, his insights into the coronavirus and also on the news of the potential merger or the beginning of discussions once again between Care New England and Lifespan, the two largest hospital networks in the state, what the positives of that could be and also what the worries are. Uh, then later this afternoon, 2.30, we'll be carrying, as always, Governor Gina Raimondo's uh, press briefing. That is scheduled for 2.30 on Wednesday. Stay tuned for updates on a number of subjects all afternoon on Go Local. But let's go to John Marion. Uh, John, thanks so much for Skyping in. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. Happy to be here. So, John, uh, yesterday, uh, kind of a landmark decision uh, over at the Ethics Commission. Can you walk us through uh, this decision relating, which has direct impact onto A, the revolving door statute in the state of Rhode Island, but also potentially who's the next member of the state Supreme Court? Sure, um, so uh, Rhode Island has a, a five member Supreme Court that's appointed by the governor. Um, she has to appoint somebody who comes from a list uh, from a screening panel called the Judicial Nominating Commission. Uh, and any lawyer can apply uh, for one of those vacancies. And a vacancy opened up several months ago um, when Justice Adelia said that he'll be stepping down at the end of the term this month. Uh, it's notable because it's the first vacancy in a decade. Uh, and Rhode Island has gone the longest of any Supreme Court in the United States uh, with a vacancy. So it's very significant. Um, that there's this vacancy, uh, and it's expected to be the first of, of several in the next few years because our court uh, is fairly um, uh, senior. And so uh, a state senator, Senator uh, Aaron Lynch uh, Prada, um, asked the State Ethics Commission, which is a separate body, um, for advice. Uh, so you're supposed to turn to the Ethics Commission uh, if you think um, you need ethics advice on what is and isn't allowed under the ethics law. And she uh, asked the Ethics Commission, can she apply for this vacancy on the Supreme Court? Because as you said, uh, there's a revolving door law in the state. The revolving door law uh, was put in place in the early 90s uh, to prevent uh, public officials, public employees from using their current position to gain an upper uh, leg in getting a new position. Um, and uh, and it's, it's supposed to be a bar on people using that advantage. Um, since the revolving door law went into effect um, in 1992, uh, we haven't seen a single member of the legislature go onto the bench. Uh, at the time, there were five, the five members of the state Supreme Court were actually all former legislators. Um, there was a period when legislators went straight to the bench. Uh, and reformers sought to, to bar that. Um, so the Ethics Commission um, process for this advice is typically um, the staff um, provides a recommendation, a legal recommendation, and then the nine appointed commissioners, um, nine times out of 10 or 99 times out of 100, um, they, they take that legal advice from the staff and they adopt it. What happened yesterday um, was the uh, staff gave a legal recommendation uh, that Senator Lynch Prada is subject to the revolving door prohibition, meaning she can't apply. It would be illegal for her to apply. Uh, and they did not accept the staff's advice. They voted it down five to two. Uh, I can say in my 11 years, it's unprecedented. Um, there have been instances uh, where advisory opinions have been voted down, but they're extremely rare and never uh, in modern times in John, uh, who are the five who voted to overrule the staff recommendation? And then tell us who the two that sustained uh, the staff recommendation. Sure. So I, I know that off the top of my head, the two who sustained it were the chair, Marissa Quinn, uh, and a member named Tim Murphy, who's a physician. Um, the five uh, who overruled it, um, I'm not sure I'll remember all five, but I know uh, Vice Chair uh, Ariane Crenty, um, uh, oh, and I'm sorry that I, I don't have the names off the top of my head, um, but Mr. Palumbo, um, uh, who's the most recent appointee, 
um, the, the gentleman who was appointed by Minority Leader Newberry, former Minority Leader Newberry. Um, so yeah, I'll try. I'll try to recall those. I'm sorry. Yeah, if you can get no, no worries. This was this wasn't one of those trick questions. Who's the president yes. of Pakistan? Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, this is an unusual situation, as you state. Uh, this has sort of been the rule since the 92 uh, reforms that was very bipartisan, and they took place after a number of abusive situations. Uh, they happened uh, both advocated by uh, Governor Sunlin as well as uh, um, then his, his follow-up, Governor Allman. Uh, this was a, a landmark, I think, push forward to have good government in Rhode Island. And in, and in many ways, those changes have served us well. What broke down in this situation? Just pure politics? So uh, there is, uh, in the revolving door, there is some uh, language uh, about, uh, there's an, there are several exceptions in the revolving door. Uh, and we've seen people use those exceptions. So uh, Richard Beach used one of those exceptions uh, uh, to become a judge several years ago. And there was some controversy around that. Uh, and yesterday focused on an exception uh, that exists uh, for people to run for constitutional office. Uh, and, and we believe it's to run for constitutional office, meaning governor, lieutenant governor, secretary of state, attorney general, uh, treasurer. Uh, the ethics commission uh, interpreted it, or at least five members did, to allow that to somebody to apply for a constitutional office uh, in the form of a justice of the Supreme Court. We disagree with that. Um, we don't think the language says that, uh, but they read the language to, to say that. So it, it came down uh, to the text uh, and an interpretation of the text, um, but it, there were politics at play for sure, because, um, I mean, it was admitted by uh, those representing uh, the senator that they had, um, uh, you know, come aggressively uh, at the commission uh, after they received uh, the draft last week. Uh, and somehow uh, they were able to successfully uh, flip enough votes uh, to get the commissioners or a majority of the commissioners um, to reject their own staff's advice. Uh, this is a very unusual situation and it comes in a time uh, in Rhode Island and in the nation in which uh, folks are looking to uh, provide a fair opportunity for folks of color. Uh, in Rhode Island's history, we've never had a minority on the state Supreme Court. Uh, it's been overwhelmingly uh, male, and in more recent years, a number of uh, female uh, uh, lawyers have been appointed. Uh, and this seems like the perfect time to appoint a minority uh, to the state Supreme Court, and there's, there's no shortage of well-qualified attorneys here. Uh, is this an extra sort of complication to this? She, uh, Lynch Prada, has a lot of support, uh, as it's well understood by Senate President Ruggiero, as well as Governor Raimondo. And is this going to be potentially the ultimate ins insult to the minority community that an insider legislator gets a special exemption de facto to be able to be a candidate for this and then scooches on uh, and, and there is not an opportunity to, de to functionally desegregate the court. Yeah, so, you know, I'll let Jim Vincent, um, you know, speak uh, for uh, the African-American community in Rhode Island. I'll let legislators like Joe Almeida uh, and others who, and, and Harold Metz who have spoken up about the need um, for more diversity on the state's uh, Supreme Court. You're absolutely right. We're in a minority of states uh, that have never had a person of color on our state highest court. And as I said, it's been 10 years since we've even had a vacancy on that court. Um, so these are very precious uh, appointments. I will say, you know, the purpose, um, and, and I can say the purpose, because I spoke this morning with, with uh, the man who was the president of the bar in 1992 when this, when this went through. The purpose was to give a fair shot to all attorneys in the state who want to be on the bench, regardless of race, um, regardless of their political um, uh, work and, and uh, any advantages they might gain through politics. And the, the tragedy of what um, is, seems to be unfolding here uh, is that it's sending a signal 
um, to qualified folks who aren't involved in the political plot process that maybe you don't have uh, an equal footing when you're pursuing one of these uh, vacancies on the court. You know, and Governor Ramondo, to her credit, um, uh, has filled a number of vacancies in the inferior courts and superior and other courts uh, with people of color. Um, and it would be a fantastic time, a message uh, to Rhode Islanders if we broke that, that barrier uh, at this time in our country's history, in our state's history. Yeah, I mean, Rhode Island still lags 27, uh, about 27 percent of the state's population is our folks of color. The courts uh, make up of, the, uh, of both the magistrates and the uh, judges is still under 10 percent, although, as you say, there's been a slight improvement under G Governor Raimondo, especially in the last cycle in which he named a number of uh, uh, Latinos and African Americans to the court. Um, is there room, is there an opportunity for Common Cause and other transparency groups to challenge this decision by uh, the Ethics Commission? So um, we're looking at that, you know, um, so this was uh, an advisory opinion and um, and that's a little different. So um, if this were a complaint that somebody had violated uh, the Code of Ethics, um, we would have a different um, uh, standing, so to speak. And so uh, we're examining that. We're also examining, you know, policy um, uh, decisions that can be made. So, you know, the revolving door does have exceptions, as I said, and we have seen some high profile folks uh, uh, be granted ex those exceptions. Maybe it's time once and for all to close those exceptions. Um, maybe it's time to look uh, at ex parte communication um, with independent boards. You know, independent boards need to be independent um, and, and not be subject uh, to outside influence. And there uh, can be rules put in place uh, to try to uh, uh, shut that down. So we're looking at a full range of options. John Marion, Common Cause Rhode Island, thank you so much for taking the time on this news that's been developing over the last 24 hours. Uh, I think there's a, uh, during a, a pandemic and uh, civil unrest, there may be some fun and games taking place at a lot of different levels of government and requires uh, good government groups and transparency groups like yourself to be diligent, especially during this period of time. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Stay tuned for more on Go Local. Uh, tune in for the governor at 2.30. Thanks, everybody, and please stay safe.